the hello viewers this is sharad mohan from usa tennessee uh, this is my second book which i wrote uh, last year now uh, india and unbroken civilization uh, this book is available on amazon etc so you can uh, have a look before i start let me have a saraswati uh, prayer so om saraswati devi namaha om vasudev namaha om namah shivaya all indians whether you are a muslim or christians we we all trace back to saraswati civilization where the artifacts which we found where the lady wearing a, a bindi and a sindoor and all the bangles she was uh, sh- she was what she was and and from her we all came and then uh, later on her children chose different faith so keep that in mind when when i talk about our unbroken civilization because the purpose of the book is to to weave a story which say that in spite of all the fault lines which india has and i will go through all of them uh, we are still one uh, one civilization which is bharat varsha uh, whether it's in the puranas uh, whether it's in mahabharat the concept of india the idea of india has been there so let me quickly start with very briefly on the idea of india so uh, i was talking to uh, some of my friends during my book presentation in new delhi and a lot of my gnu friends and uh, uh, liberal friends most of them tried to convince me that the idea of india uh, india as a country started only in 1947 when um, pandit nehru became our first prime minister which which to some is a very way of understanding india but india is not uh 1947 and this is what i have mentioned in the book that the very idea of india right and and all those things but india is is such an ancient landmass or civilization that none of the current science the scale the parameters which our current science uses can can you know match it the only uh, answer we can get for the idea of india is you know using the geological uh, break of the land well again that is that is one of the signs if you if you agree and and from from the very beginning of this the idea of india was there and and this is what i will try to show in my uh, presentation india is called the cradle of human civilization a lot of people have called it now uh, the diversity of india is almost as the african so genetically speaking africans have the most diverse uh, human uh, genes and similarly in, in india so why sh- and india is the only ancient surviving civilization all the ancient 7 8 civilization have been wiped out so why should we lose that like all the um, young kids right right now they will think that in the in the midst of covid when unemployment when gdp is the main talking point why are we talking about this well gdp economy is definitely needed and in fact sitting here in america i can see the advantage of of being a progressive and economically sound you can do so many things for your people that is that track is is continuous that track should not be mixed with other things but again you you 24 by 7 you don't sit on your dining table and eat there are some other activity you also do right uh and that other activity is what we are discussing because it, it has to be multidisciplinary you just cannot have a one point agenda only talk about gdp and not talk about other because gdp is is a is a continuous going track you, your government has to has to do all kinds of reforms or whatever is needed so that india grows in in wealth because as the wealth will come in more money will go to the research to these these type of uh, ancient thing and ancient thing is just not a story it is not a story guys it 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 gives your you an identity whether however rich you become if you travel uh, outside your country you are only an indian okay and your identity comes first and and then everything is weaved around it and and um, it's it's not only you know who you are it's also what you learn from it you know the past mistake should not be repeated uh, you know mahabharat should not be repeated in spite of mahabharat happening we still had a partition of india we still had world war 1 world war 2 people will keep on doing like this because people are people right like like uh, so uh, 
the cleansing keeps on happening that's what that's the work of rudra every every certain time so some society becomes uh, uh, comes to a point where some cleansing is needed right even in a programming world you have an uh, uh, exit command otherwise you will go in a loop so it's very scientific uh, so we'll discuss that human uh, cradle of civilization coming to uh, so the idea of india right um, people say as as i said idea of india started only few years back uh, 1947 but i say idea of india started long long time back even the when the very formation of the earth now i'm not talking about sanatan scale but i'm talking the modern science scale so earth was formed some 4.5 billion years back correct 4.5 billion years back the so first uh, first came uh, and then after 4.5 billion back uh, years back it was all gas and then it started solidifying and then uh, some kind of uh, hardening happened right uh, and uh, so this is what they call it the formation of physics so physics came around i would say uh, 3.5 to 3.75 billion years back after physics then you know uh, once um, uh a lot of chemical actions are happening the gases and all the things settling down so the chemistry they say scientists say the chemistry came in the physics and chemistry they are as old as 3.5 billion so 4.5 billion for earth age then physics and chemistry happened uh, accordingly it was after a billion year uh, later around 2.5 billion when biology started right when uh, and what is biology that is where the mic uh, microorganism and all those things started uh, so the entire entire universe creation the life creation as of now the best of the scientists have not come to an agreement how it started so when and i'm trying to build an analogy so when we say something about our ancient india right uh, like million years back this happened people have lot of question how 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 but they have no question on the um, formation of the universe right how it formed everybody agreed one fine day that okay 4.5 billion looks good and then the earth was formed on 4.5 billion years ago now 2.5 billion years ago um the biology happened and then the life form started now how the life started whether it started in the water or in air uh, that one agreement that you know the first life started uh, in the water so the water has to be formed right and then the whole theory started about uh, uh, from single cell life to complex cell life then then to the uh, animals plants and then uh, Uh, came the the monkeys and then came mr darwin and mr darwin converted the monkeys to bipedal and bipedal to humans all those theories are theories they are assumption they are strong assumption so far there is no counter assumption that strong to to become a main mainstream but that does not mean that is the fact again as i said about the data this, these are all sequence or activity but activity cannot whether it was a homicide or whether it was a suicide or whether it was killing activity is somebody died so science is exactly kind of like that right so um, so that is what we are trying to build uh, again uh, is all logic rationality uh, but has to be supported by a strong model and and science is an open text meaning just few years back we had uh, nine planets now we have eight, pla- eight planets pluto is no more a planet so science is an open text as you keep on finding new new things you keep on changing and that is where the sanatan dharma our our vedas were to be an open text so people say oh it's an open text you kept on adding lot of information later on so and then they come to timeline and they question everything so i'm trying to build an analogy that if science which is scientific knowledge accepted by all is an open text and keep on changing so was our ancient text and it was very scientific in nature in that way so you know you have to have a counter narrative you know you are questioned about your own ancient uh, had now uh, coming to the origin of life so how does the life start uh, people say and, and scientists say that there uh, it was the protein 
uh, which is nothing but the amino acid from where we formed. And there were only 20 amino acids, uh, which is responsible for life on the earth. Okay. Uh, but there is a, um, uh, also a finding that there was a Metatrison metroid which fell, which had 75 amino acids. So why, why Mother Earth chose only 20 amino acids to form a human life or some kind of a life, not only human, but, but life on the Earth? What was the logic? Do we have uh, um, in the intercellular or in the space, do we have, uh, there are different, um, uh, like uh, Metatrison Metroid, which fell, has 75 amino acids. So uh, is, uh, does the alien have different uh, protein or different uh, thing for the life? We don't know. Science cannot say with conviction, but science can definitely say that, you know, how we are formed uh, based on this assumption that, you know, some, some protein came from some outside and, we, uh, and the life was formed. So this 20 amino acid is responsible for the life on the universe. So what I'm trying to say is, see, everything is based on assumption. Initial science was all based on assumption. There is no short start uh, saying. So when we talk about our, our uh, story of India and unbroken civilization, we are saying a lot of things based on the, the data which we have from our Vedas, like the astrology, uh, like the the uh, the flora and fauna of that time, the geology of that time, and still, if you are questioned, I know you have to have a counter uh, counter for for this, saying that you know how science also evolved. Then we have uh, uh, life formed from uh, water, from water, a single cell to a human being, right? And that's when Mr. Darwin comes in and he talks about how the people from um, Africa, they moved to Asia. Now, this is one theory which has been um, discussed a lot. And I, I have a big problem with this theory. And, and again, uh, I talked to a few genetics experts here in the USA, uh, Uni University of San Diego. Uh, I won't name the professor. He is uh, head of the genetics. Uh, and I sat in the lab with, with my friend and we had a discussion about on the Darwin theory that how West came to the Darwin theory. Because in our Sanatana Dharma or our ancient book, we are not um, uh, offspring of the, of the monkey race. We, we basically, humans were born as humans. Now, a uh, lot of people will have question to that, right? Because it's, they will say it's not science and, and all, all the story, but what is science? Science and I and, and being a student of science and also technology. Science in a, in a science lab, right? Whatever you you create, it could be repeated whether it is in India or it's in America or it's in uh, England. If if the lab situation is same, meaning lab condition is same, and you do an experiment, the result will be almost same. Okay. So it's, it's not that there is one lab, suppose, uh, uh, in America, and then uh, it, it, that scientific experiment can happen only in that lab because only that lab has a, a certain um, situation. Then it is not a science. Then it is like, you know, it's, some, it, it's like a, a seed is, is sown in one place and then it's taken to everywhere. So my theory of my, my saying of this uh, entire... Uh, out of Africa migration is that 4.5 billion, billion years ago, Earth was formed. And 2.5 billion years ago when biology came and life started. And the recent research are, uh, in, um, uh, on India, they have found that the stones, uh, the, the rocks in Goa and some part of, uh, I think, Urissa, right, both coasts, the rocks are as old as 2.5 billion years ago. So the time when Africa was formed, India was also formed because the rock says they are that old. Okay. So one, 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 uh, one point I'm bringing is when Africa was formed, India was also formed, right? Because of the rock, that's what your geology says. Now, when the, when, uh, when the land mass was formed, then the next step is uh, the organism to come, right? Uh, some kind of life. Now, Africa and India were, were together till 50 million years ago. This is what the current science says. And I will show you through this uh, map. So if you, if you see this, 
you know, you you must have all heard about Gondwana, one big landmass, and then how it's a split, uh, and the continental drift and all those things, and split and formed a different uh, uh, continent. If you see, India was connected. If you see here, I'm I'm pointing here. Uh, not sure if you can see my cursor. If you see Africa, uh, South America, Africa, and and India here, India is very much near the Antarctica, right? So uh, India, India, you see, this India is an island. See, India is the on, only uh, country uh, which was there since millions and uh, years, and this is given by the uh, Western scholars, right? And, and I don't want to quote Western scholar because I, I have a, another theory in the end. I will talk about how our guys should not be following blindly but for now so india is here india was already formed and then india started moving upward if you see my second uh, uh, picture here uh, this one 50 to 55 million years ago india began to collide with asia right so india was just a island floating island like sri lanka started moving up 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 and and it 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 banged to the asian landmass and when it banged uh, when it crashed with asia two things happened the tibet plateau was formed and himalaya was raised right so today you know uh, you know if you are politically following news you will see, you know you will be reading lot and your 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 tv new, uh, news in india would be covered with india and and china and galwan and ladakh and all the thing and and china bringing ming and ding dynasties uh, uh, logic to say that you know tibet and all these parts were were there your scholars should say that you know ge geologically india gave birth to himalaya itself india gave birth to tibet plateau so who owns that right let let the geologists of the world uh, stand for you again this is a pun intended but um, what i'm trying to say is uh, india the idea of india started long long time back uh, e even the geologists uh, million million years back when they were uh, looking to the earth they saw that India, a landmass, was already there, and India was connected with Africa and Mad Madagascar, and later on it broke. This was around 170, 150 million years ago. That's why, if you if you if you do if you do some research on Madagascar, they have a, a, a special an um, animal called lemur, uh, uh, which very much looks. They, they behave like a human, right? Uh, they behave like a human. They look like very human in nature, but their face and everything is like, you know, a mouse, Indian mouse. So was, were they the uh, brothers of the Indian mouse? Because Indian mouse story is that it spread from India across the world, right? Uh, so whereas the, the, Dar the, the, the Darwin and the, the race theory people say that, you know, first humans moved from Africa to Asia and then to Europe and then to Australia. That is one theory, but that theory is, cannot, can never be proven. We are saying that that is not right. And the, the whole uh, logic I'm trying to build is uh, the amino acid story. Then I'm saying that the formation of the earth uh, and in India was formed before. So, so the science lab uh, analogy, which I was trying to give is if something happens in Africa, and if the same condition is in India, why will India wait for something to happen in Africa uh, scientifically? And then, you know, that life form that that people, first people who were form, formed in Africa, then they move to India. It has to happen simultaneously. So my theory in this book is that the life, the humans start uh, after life uh, had started, humans formation uh, started simultaneously both in Aust in Africa and India because the condition was same. There is no dependency, right? Conditions were same. India was already formed. Uh, India India had a li livable condition where human could uh, live based on the geological uh, uh, map and geological uh, research. You can see. So so there was no point in you know somebody from Africa walking all the way and how will they walk? Uh, to the Khyber Pass and ter tough terrain and entire world was, uh, uh, they had so many ice ages, uh, seven ice ages they ha which has been mentioned. So you cross all the thing only to come to India for what? So the whole logic uh, needs uh, rethinking, right? So it is very simple to understand that the life was formed on the Indian planet uh, or Indian landmass. So when I say India, 
it includes afghanistan it includes pakistan and lot of the eastern uh, like indonesia all were uh, kind of uh, one landmass so so that is so that is what my idea of india is and and, and people have to prove it wrong they just cannot say that uh, their model is right so india was formed at the same time when africa was formed and so the entire peopling of the indian subcontinent uh, is questionable because when you already have a people here why would you know uh, somebody will come and people you uh, or populate you peopling right um, you can come and mix there were a lot of mixing ha- happen and that's where the race theory was given but then those mixing happen uh, like 5000 years only but we are talking about million years from million years we are talking about few la- uh, lakhs or 100k years and then from 100k years a few thousand years there is no scale other than geology which can measure it and and the entire race theory and uh, all this thing given is based on some construct which people have used linguistic language to build the construct now my my logic to it, it is if a lion in in uh, siberia or in africa and, and india if they roar can you then have a ling- uh, race theory that you know this is a siberian lion and he is and the lion will roar in the same way so so um, so that is one, one uh, logic another is the migratory birds the birds always fly from one destination to another destination in search of food but that does not mean they never return back but entire migration theory from africa to in, to to other parts of the world is one way tra- traffic how is it possible and then if you move uh, say a very small set of people you come to asia you come to china see the population of china and india is, uh, is 40% of the world population so you you uh, how can the seed grow into that huge number when you, you know you are a migratory person you don't come to some place and suddenly you become the whole so the whole logic is wrong right and then comes your gene theory where they bring about the r1a r1a is found in 40% of the indians but then the diversity and the diversity theory says that the orig- when you have more diverse uh, landmass the origin of the source of the r1 uh, one has to be that place it cannot be that you know somebody from europe or, or central asia or persia came and and populated and then went back so everything is, is wrong uh, uh, not wrong but it was weaved in a way that the biblical timeline is met and and these people were very uh, smart scholars in 1700 and all the research if you see the original research were all happened in one uh, just 1700 something and we are carrying that for too long time all our scholars uh, from from india's top institute whether it's iits gnus ism institute of science bangalore uh, or the hyderabad genetic research uh, or the iit kharagpur people have still been quoting the western scholars right that is one of my big big uh, uh, so all the students and the young people who are listening try to see things from a different perspective your carbon dating concept your uh, data modeling concept your everything your unit of measure for you the time the very time which is linear which they which the which current science is linear your concept says is is a, is a circular that's where the concept of uh, satya yug treta yug kaliyug uh, and dwapar dwapar and treta uh, dwapar and kaliyug comes right four four yugas and four yugas make one man, manvantar and and one manvantar 71 manvantar makes one kal, kalpa all kinds of concepts so there has to be some research to be done time has to be cyclic uh, as per sanatan dharma and you know you just cannot brush it aside because even in uh, the the biggest problem today in, uh, in physics is the understanding of the dark matter right people have not understood dark matter right and we have a concept of kali and uh, and shiva shiva uh, if you read puranas he was shown as uh, somebody with a, a pure white skin because he was in himalayas and then there was a concept of kali uh, and kali had all the uh, destructive powers and absorbing power when she grew uh, out of control even even, even uh, say shiva couldn't handle all those story but the way our our ancient uh, books were written it was mainly uh, 
it was lit, science was lit, written in a literature form right if you read siddhanta if you see surya siddhanta surya siddhanta found five um, uh, planets right and people say it's eight but think about this it was more than 10000 plus years back when these guys found five planets because there was no telescope but see the distance they have given from earth uh, to sun uh, all those calculation mm, surya siddhanta has shalokas right because at that time sanskrit probably was the language of a uh, lot of literary thing in the uh, one part of india and tamil in the other part of india uh, so to mention about moon like one moon one star or multiple star they used anecdote to mention a number say one or two they used kind of a um, uh, objects for example one moon in the star so for number one they used moon for number two they used eyes right so th- that because in shaloka shalokas has to be in rhythm so they had to write shalokas the gyan was written in the shalokas right that's uh, so the way our ancient people used to write science it was mainly in 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 the form of a of a literature which had to be understood by the scholars right and and this is where uh, we face lot of challenge because uh, the the knowledge is still there but to decipher it into a right way is always a problem the idea of india was very ancient from the a uh, geological times to the current time so india was formed as you see in the map a long time back millions of years back we gave birth to himalayas then 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 uh, the peopling of the, Afri- uh, the india happened migration from africa all this thing happened now from um, there is one of the genetic research we say that most of the indians originated from a lady somewhere in in narmada basin uh, in the southern and central part of india uh, 65000 years back and you would also know that the jarwa tribes of andaman they are originally in in today's world people uh, find uh, people say that they are 60000 years back so we always here right where is the bimbitka cave uh, bimbitka cave or anything we have seen people always being on the indian subcontinent so india is an old story uh, for more detail please read the book uh, i have given the whole sequence of it uh, now i will very quickly go to the uh, migration theory out of india migration uh so out of africa is i won't say that theory is is wrong but out of south africa that means people moving from africa to india is not the only gospel truth okay M- movement was both side and coming all the way from africa to india even in today's world with the all uh, modern science it's not easy it's like uh, if you have to go to africa it will be hours of flight right and and coming all the way on road and especially when you are in a primitive age crossing that huge part is a big thing so some that that entire model has to be redone right so, so the idea of india has to be built that's where uh, the india and unbroken civilization for million millions of years india was there india as a name i don't agree i said i think it should be bharat because in mahabharat in puranas everywhere it has been very clearly said that it is bharat but then for western audience we said india so uh, that is a different discussion we can discuss but again bharat as a country or india as a country was very old and that includes pakistan and afghanistan so and indonesia and and other parts now moving on to the the divide so what are the divides we we face now the aryan immigration theory the lot of experts have spoken enough so uh, i am not sure uh, what more i can add to that uh, the dravidian divide i will briefly touch um, indus valley civilization so so friends just 200 years back just 200 years back britishers or the world never knew about indus valley civilization so they built the entire model of civilization saying that indians were primitive imagine just 200 years back there was no though there was no harappa civilization so that's what i'm saying not everything has been dug yet you know as uh, as india become more affluent from say 3 trillion economy roughly 3 trillion economy to say 5 trillion economy when your gdp goes up probably more money will be put into the research more more digging will happen and more things will be uncovered the entire varanasi belt to to notice has not been dug yet the entire gangetic plain the brahmaputra uh, has not been dug yet we do not know the history the, uh, the entire construct of india 
the aryan and dravidian is northeast and little bit of southern part india is not that india is much bigger to this that we will discuss later but uh, so th so these are the divides uh, which I india face and in spite of all the divides we have linguistic divide right whether uh, sanskrit is older or tamil is an older all this type of discussion what is wrong in accepting both are older i mean in fact i have suggested in my in my book that to solve the language problem which which you know uh, our southern uh, friends all ha has an issue and which i uh, which i supported actually it uh, you know tamil and sanskrit should be made as an heritage language along with few other language as an heritage language of india they are our pride a, a, a guy sitting in up should be learning tamil a, a, a guy living in bihar should be learning in tamil because that's a heritage because learning tamil is not just a language you learn about lot of wisdom virtues the ayurvedas they had 18 siddhas they had sangam period superb literature right but politician will not allow it to happen they will always create a friction uh, you know uh, that uh, we you read french spanish you know um, now mandarian all those languages but you know indian language are not promoted within india so that is one problem and language is important lot of people say well it's english english is needed english cannot be uh, removed and when when we say india indian should study say uh, their their uh, education till fifth grade in their mother tongue it's not that we are saying no to english right is basically to become become an original thinkers you have to think in your own mother tongue that is one one idea i i have seen and i have i have also found lot of similarities all the nobel laureates whether it's a jews or the germans they were they all even four of them four of them were right all the uh, indian nobel laureates they all started their basic in mother tongue because you don't have to you know mug up something just to cram 99% marks in exam you have to be original thinkers and that's original thinkers are the people who will construct and deconstruct model give you give you solutions rather than just being a service provider so you need to build two categories it's not that you know you have to just do one thing the nothing extreme is right you have to have both coexist that's what sanatan dharma is we coexist but if somebody tries to boss around then there will be a problem because this is a new aspirant new india which knows their cultural values their strength and they know their global presence so you know people like us uh, who have come here not because of ourselves because of the indian education system indian value system we have survived here we have done well here now we are trying to assimilate here much much better by having you know political presence so how can we do that and why we are not trying to replicate the same thing in india i would not compare like that you know it, everything has time uh, probably the maturity curve uh, india is going through that it will reach maybe it's little slow but it will definitely reach so uh, so these are the divides um, which i am showing on the screen and uh, the last one is the adivasi divide adivasi to me is you know all this theory of aryan dravidian but you know you are totally missing your your uh, bheel tribe you are totally missing your santhali tribe your andamanese tribe your northeastern tribes uh, you know in fact uh, one of the puranas say that the first human they were born somewhere in tibet uh, and then they moved down south right so the, this has to be researched and we read better and that will only happen when the gangetic plain the ganga vasis and the brahmaputra could be digged to find the new uh, findings right now so far iit kharagpur has done an awesome job uh, by finding the birana and the rakhi gari rakhi gari is as big as you know is is huge it's like so big that even mohan jodara looks so small and when you compare the other civilization like sumerian the egyptian the mesopotamian they are like they look like one small city when compared to your uh, mohan jodaro and now you have the whole entire rakhi gari where 60 skeletons were found unfortunately the current signs uh could not decipher much only one or two was um, uh, deciphered and 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 then from there they built the entire dna gene pool and the gene pool said that we are indigenous people from 8000 years but again 
8,000, 10,000 is what you are basically talking about. But your civilization goes much beyond that. It's not, so there is no scale or no knowledge or no unit of measure in today's science, which can say uh, with authenticity that from 10,000 to say 50,000, this was what happened. It's all based on assumption. So why do you succumb uh, to some foreign theories given to you? And, and I'm, if, if any JNU students or any liberal students they are hearing, see, knowledge by being a sarcastic and saying everything is, you know, Gau Mutra and, and RSS and all those things, that is one political stand. But from knowledge perspective, any idea, any, any, see, to call anything myth, you need to first, uh, you know, have a model to prove it wrong, right? Just cannot, so reading Karl Marx, reading those are, they were, those were all great people, but to blindly follow and uh, everything which is outside and not following what is your own is, is, is where the problem is, right? If you go outside, you will not be known, however, you know, accented English or, or dress up you have, you still will be looked from the place from where you come. Your, your passport will not change that. Try to understand that. Uh, I don't call Indus Valley civilization like of many scholars. I think it is Saraswati River, Saraswati civilization, Sindhu Saraswati civilization. But India is not just Sindhu Saraswati civilization. India is Ganga, Yamuna, Ganga, Saraswati and Kaveri civilization. And Ganga, Brahmaputra and Kaveri has not been researched uh, research yet and we will wait for the time when you know, young students will take that research. Saraswati civilization as, we, as you know uh, Saraswati river drying up there's a lot of time, uh, time scale uh, where people are debating whether it was 20,000 years back it dried up or whether it was 4,000 years she dried up but I will stick to all our uh, ancient books and especially the Ramayana, the Puranas, the Vedas and the Mahabharata right all of them have mentioned about river Saraswati. Okay, in 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 um, in Puranas, Shiv Puran, it is mentioned. In Vedas, Vedas has Rig Ved has has a lot of shalokas, uh, shalokas thanking uh, uh, river Saraswati, uh, and the entire civilization was built at one time. Saraswati was. Saraswati was a very gushing river with intense speed and very wide. Normally, when river gushes from mountain to the plain forming valley, it's very thin. But Saraswati was a different case. She was like 12 kilometers wide at some places. That's what um, the satellite image shows. And, and one day it dried up. Now, a lot of people will say that, you know, how can something will happen like that, right? But... I live in here in Tennessee and, you know, Tennessee has a lot of caves. So we went to one cave here, like, you know, in the mountain, some, somebody found a cave and then they, they dig and they found that there's a whole civilized whole cave where the native Americans uh, used to live. One of the cave is called missing rivers cave. Now, when I asked to the guide, what is this missing river? When, so they, they showed me on the cave uh, ceiling. Uh, there is a whirlpool mark, right? In, in the rock, you know, when water keeps on uh, gushing through that, the water will leave mark, right? That's how valleys and all those things are formed. So in the Tennessee cave, they said that thousands and thousands of years, I think I don't remember the date, but it's definitely uh, 10,000 or something. Um, not 20,000, but 10,000. When this river suddenly became uh, dry, right? You, you, and then it has left this car. Now, for Saraswati, right? People who question the um, the existence of river Saraswati say it's a mythological uh, story. It's not right. But Saraswati is uh, was a river. There was a the tectonic movement happening somewhere in uh, Himalayas, and uh, and because of that, it went inside. Uh, and and this has happened. This is this is scientifically not wrong. And in fact, Vedas has mentioned about about that. Um, where uh, the molten lava and, and the Agni, Agni fluid, it, it's all mentioned, which gulped uh, Saraswati. Uh, Ramayana mentioned about river Saraswati when uh, somebody was sent from Ayodhya to Kaikai, uh, Kaikai Raj, which was probably somewhere in Afghanistan area, and they had to cross Saraswati. So 
the the messenger had to uh, cross the river uh, in in few days so that is, that mention is, is there uh, rigveda as i said has a mention of saraswati and then comes uh, mahabharat where uh, uh, one of my friend i was talking yesterday aditya and nilesh okji they both have come to a conclusion that when uh, yudhishthir uh, was in uh, 12 years of one was he went to a place somewhere near haridwar and uh, not haridwar in fact uh, somewhere near up saharanpur or some area where uh, the mention of that jungle and saraswati uh, with a different name saraswati has a 1000 name so one of the name so saraswati saraswati was mentioned in that and and you know a scholar like nilesh says that there are 80 times mention of saraswati in mahabharat so saraswati dried so agreed you India is an old civilization. All these things, which I have covered in uh, in my book in detail, the race theory and uh, and all those things. But uh, I will say uh, two more things for the Dravidian divide. So when you talk to the Dravidian people, they mention about the color of the skin is different from the North Indian. Color of the skin is not the race theory. Color of the skin is not the race theory. If you if you re- if there was a research done that ten thousand years back, Britain first british people were dark in color but with blue eye okay so so geo- geology and 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 time and and you know those things change the skin color uh, coming to the dna uh, that there is a famous story of the identical twins in in america where one brother uh, in uh, one brother went to uh, to the space as an astronaut and and twin brother twin ethnic brother twin brothers uh, they had same dna but one brother went to the space he stayed in the space for one month the other was uh, in texas somewhere and when after after he returned when the test was done they found that the dna uh, was little different so it's not that you know dna will define the race because dna can differ based on lot of other reason your stress your your geography and lot of other things so um, a new perspective has to be seen uh for for the research but in the end what i will i will address to the young people is see the entire carbon dating the unit of measure everything which you quote the geo- the geology the archaeology the flora and fauna everything you quote you have taken from western country where is your standing guys where is your model there is not one financial model there is no thing which is authentic which has come from india even in today's world when you have access to all kinds of knowledge repository across the world you still quote you still use the same scale to measure your ancient uh, wisdom which i think should be challenged now right um don't uh, come out with your own even if it is small even if it is crude come out with your own that is where you will be able to construct indian uh, idea of india in a right way your history your science everything will be in a right way that does not mean you discard everything old try to understand the fine line which i am trying to say our medical books our engineering books everything has been written taking different code different standards different context why can't our our intellectuals our own people have their own standards my book uh, motivates a lot of young people to get into that kind of research and and be proud of what they are right uh, uh, you you can only be successful you can only be successful whether you be a scientist a star a ceo or or whoever or, or even a politician you need to stand on a strong ground your identity should be very crisp and clear you could not be a mixture admixture of everything and try to construct your own separate race theory like the dravidian parties have done it uh, you know um, but with that thank you very much all for joining me and listening sorry it was a long call but uh, read my book again uh, it's available on amazon and uh, everything which i have covered this will definitely uh, this is definitely needed for the young kid research and become a, a proud citizen of the world and also india that's what sanatan dharma is and uh, we can coexist with anyone but time has changed where you cannot boss around with that i end thank you very much and i yes, thanks for the nice talk and uh, this uh, introduction about the continental drift uh, my thing is that as you commented on the technology part you are saying that the india has the science but not the technology 
so it's a really it's a big statement for me <laughs> actually because most of the time in scientific diaspora i have find this thing that uh, people are discussing about the planes or the medicine system of ancient india like uh, in ramayana mentioned about the mo- moving the mountain so my question is that if technology was not in the past then uh, how only <clears throat> science can exist because the relevance of science comes when you apply it somewhere and make the technology so i was really surprised with your comment and uh, it's really very disputed in academic era about the discussing sure. uh, pushpaka sure. viman so sure, can you sure, comment sure. on this yeah the context with which i am painting i am only talking about the current india right uh, the modern india yes we had the technology long time back but there is no science which can go back and and you know validate all those things right now right so i am leaving that 20000 years back or 15000 years back history i am talking about current india right i was saying that why we are back when compared to the chinas and the um, and the west of the world where i see that uh, uh, all our education when i say science right we knew a lot about theory part right uh, if you see uh, our surya siddhanta if you see our uh, number system the, uh, the 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 river concept we have we have uh, we had all those things in ancient time i'm not saying in ancient india we didn't have technology but but i'm not talking about the ancient india right now i was talking about today world in all our books even in our vedas we have all the knowledge scientific knowledge right how things work but to do things work you are no more doing i'm using upon you're not doing yag yagnas yag was nothing but a, a laboratory where people were experimenting a lot now in a modern world how much investment are we giving to the research and development of our gene is negligible uh, and that's where you know our own guys when they come to uh, west just with a small uh, infrastructural change right mindset is all, always there but just with a small infrastructural change they are coming out with so many products so many uh, you know, so so to me that is what the technology part which is missing in current india again if you are con- connecting with pushpak vimana and all those things i have not discussed that that's a different discussion uh, lo- as i said lot of our gyan was written in multiple books so literature uh, so for example surya siddhanta to decode it you have to read three four other books that's what people used to blindly say that oh for vedas you have to be first tuned to understand ved you just cannot anybody cannot read ved so i don't believe in that kind of thing i think everybody should had got chance to read and understand but because it was such a sacred thing uh, all this uh, knowledge that people kept only with with themselves and and that's what i am saying that technology didn't go to the larger uh, audience larger people and and we we somehow got uh, uh, we missed the bus Uh, for example a uh, very quickly I'll, i'll touch the the uh, the mesopotamia so there is a new research i think uh, you, you would have heard about dr uh, i think arvinda uh, he, uh, he has mentioned that just two years back european union uh, sanctioned some 2 to 3 million to do to do research to find out how mesopotamian civilization and entire uh, biblical era right entire christianity and all was in that region so they have invested Uh, 3 million dollars to find out that in mesopotamia 5000 years or, or 6000 years back uh, people were using uh, uh, copper bronze tin right all the artifacts were same but the source was not uh, in that area so from where so much of uh, tin and copper came right and and uh, so where was the technology right because it's not there so they found out that it was nothing but your your country and indonesia east from where this used to travel to mesopotamia so so but then all those gyan of you know making tin and copper and all the thing has been lost because it was only kept with one few books and in in a multiple form right it's not directly written today's technology book is written uh, shaloka part is written there math part is written some in some other siddhanta and to collaborate all together for a for a knowledge which is more than 5000 years is is difficult and that's where i'm think i think it's missing so knowledge you have you can read uh, nuclear physics you can read all the thing but can you can all the countries make uh, atom bomb only only five six countries can make it because technology is not with everybody gyan is with everybody so in that context i mentioned
thank you uh, sir how can you deny the aryan uh, how can you deny the uh, it's not an european or something which means uh, it is a the linguistic resource as a classifying it is a indo european language as a uh, north sure. indian language dravidan dravidan language is a, is an indigenous thing uh, uh, that's the first part indo european it's coming european is a you know the it's already coming uh, the classifying as a north okay right. the second thing is how we can take the take uh, mahabharata and ramayana uh, as a source of the as a source to explain our history because uh, you, we all know the ramastra the sachanaro how can uh, so uh, how can it's uh, it's impossible and the third question last question cyrus uh, the cyrus of iran he mentioning he is he as a uh, uh, first uh, yeah, aryan king of the year. so uh, if you if you come to the aryan aryan invasion is false means uh, then why the cyrus of iran mentioning he is a uh, aryan king so for ramayan one of the uh, two things uh, why ramayan is not a history or not a the story is one is the astrology part right the the birth of rama the uh, ashwin uh, nakshatra and all those um, situation which has been mentioned exactly matches a lot of um, scientific research and and uh, on the simulation of the earth during that many years back so that is one another is in if you are from uh, tamil nadu we have a uh, lot of um, presence of rama especially which you, you also know that it was a political issue and you know how uh, our and i have a lot of research for karnanidhi by the way um, he, he can be political but he he is not an ordinary indian even he is he, is, he was a great guy from lot of perspective right so karnanidhi government for whatever reason they try to uh, break the ram setu so two hardcore solid in uh, in uh, one is your dwarka in mahabharat and and then mahabharat timeline and another is your uh, uh, ram setu now none of the faith whether it's a brahmic faith christianity islam or or jews will have anything that kind of a geologically proof to prove that you know that faith i'm and i am giving comparison because people do comparison so there is nothing to say that you no know, 4000 years back these are the artifacts which prove that my faith was right so it's all comparative so in that way your your um, indian landmass with, with with whatever faith we have here they have two solid uh, geological evidence of this now how to construct thing right you cannot even remember uh, 100 200 years back what happened everything has to be constructed we are trying to construct based on certain fact that could be 80% or 90% correct it cannot be correct so uh, you know you have to see things in that perspective ari based um, see in mahabharat people have been called arya right N- even mandodri mandodri wife of ravan used to call ravana arya arya means signi or gentleman now if arya is a race then signiora is a, is a race uh, uh, you know uh, amigos is a race gentleman is a race so that was a thing which they used to call uh, that was a first question a lot of debate um, there are a lot of genetic proof which has been done we are not saying that tamils are uh, exactly copy paste of uh, you know people who look from north ethnicity could be different but you need to understand that the the sangam history right from 10000 years to three period of sangam there is also mention of uh, aryans The, the the great uh, uh, Tamil kings were called Arya, okay, and 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 also um, uh, Irulu tribe. So so what Western country did was they tried to use language because see entire Europe, right? The entire all this knowledge came only in seventeen hundred. If you see the chronology of this knowledge, they all came in sixteen seventeen hundred. Entire Europe. Was formed based on linguistic basis, right? Uh, French, Fr- uh, French France, German Germany, uh, Spanish, uh, British English. So they formed their country based on the language, and they brought the whole concept in India. So uh, that language is 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 a race. Whereas in India, every four kilometers or every ten uh, kilometers, language changes. There are five thousand language in India. You know that, and only fourteen or fifteen are uh, the main language. Five thousand language in in the same country. So. Uh, you cannot have five thousand races. If you read the history, um, Tamil definitely uh, 
there are a lot of brahmi script which was uh, entire uh, manu flood right so manu flood which happened in the gujarat part and it it crosses uh, your uh, narmada and tamil a lot of people also find that you know maybe tamilians because of the brahmi script and afghanistan connection baluchistan connection they actually move because of the flood to this part so a lot of correlation and stories are there to to correlate now coming to the last part your iranian king one iranian king says this you you make it as a gospel truth and you have like 60 and 100 books written here on your own uh, by your own uh, about the race theory and you you don't agree because one of the thing mentioned um, in mahabharat that uh, mahabharat had um, um, 11 akshuni sena one akshuni sena again many people have different uh, uh, answer but but in wikipedia 11 akshuni sena of kauravas Have, uh, and and seven akshuni senas of pandavas total was around 40 40 lakhs or something right because one akshuni sena was 2.5 lakhs with chariot elephant infantry how do you think this 40000 people parked in in one uh, village called kurukshetra in somewhere in north uh, haryana who was feeding them it was the southern king from it was probably chera chera uh, king or somebody who took the the ownership of you know feed so all these things have been mentioned in your literature now everything cannot be cooked up everything could not be done in just like 500 years right this is the in beautiful correlation so uh, we need to understand a lot of things uh, and again as i say ethnicity wise we may be different right people from punjab but from genes perspective you are still same and all indians came from one south indian mother 65000 years back this is what uh, this is another uh, truth okay so we all came from one south indian mother and this is how in india uh, uh, was formed right but my question is more uh, about uh, your latest book um so um you know when you read about bihar i am bihari so i'm telling you when yesterday i read that the child index and the child mortality everything whatever you see at, at any bihar is the lowest you know so um, Like uh, you say, other states are uh, at the higher level. So that's one thing. Now, Bihar is full of talent people, but I don't think it's going to help in the people who are at the decision-making level to actually make the difference. Do they have the vision? So I'm going to summarize my question so that it's easier for you to answer. Um, because as a Bihari, uh, you know, I don't think anything called Bihari. Because if you see people from Gujarat, they think and probably uh, do things more at that state level or for um, maharashtra or even for south but as a bihari we always talk about as a national level you think as well, a you know, yeah yeah so the question is um, how are you going to prioritize i want you to just uh, um, if if you can in a nutshell if you can see the three uh, you know uh, things that you would like you know people to start thinking uh, about or you think that Uh, f- these three things are probably most okay. critical uh, steps okay. uh, to reboot Bihar, uh, changing the thought process, or bringing Bihar up to the uh, you know the national level. So, if you can okay. just summarize based on your book, that would be great. So, very quickly, uh, see, uh, Bihar is also uh, a part of Bharat Varsh, right? Um, part of India, and uh, people are very hardworking, right? Um, they have, uh, they have. In fact, the for a lot of audience here, the written history of the modern written history of india started from nanda dynasty which west also acknowledges so uh, that that is one of the uh, big contribution of the state because the after after the nandas then the mauryas and uh, uh, mauryas and then the guptas so you had a very good uh, past right uh, last um, 150 to 200 years since the middle of the uh, uh, mughal rule uh, like uh, during the bakhtiyar khilji the nawab of bengal Uh, to the um, say 2005 uh, it has gone downhill right um, people of the states uh, very hard working people uh, they they had to move they have to move out and all those things so i have written uh, very deep in in the book about the if india has to be strong if bharat varsh has to be strong the twelve biharis have to come out of their poverty and and have to be uh, affluent because that's when the dream of india to become a 5 trillion economy will be one of the thing i would say is you know uh, in, in a short because uh, this needs a bigger discussion and probably next time is you know let us ask, ask bihari to learn tamil and marathi these are two developed states 
you learn you you and you will get the answer because you know once you learn a language tamil is such a rich language like the way people the the rich social life and biharis will be very it's it's naturally it will come to biharis because they have also done a lot of social engineering uh, in their state and if you read tamil siddhars or tamil uh, sangam literature they are very social oriented if you see the dramas if you see the, the way the societies have been formed there's a lot of stress on the people the development so uh, in quick if you want quick learn learn these two language uh, you have been learning lot of other languages you learn these two language and you know development will come the whole mindset will change because it may look little very uh, you know um, from top but language is not language it, it's a mindset change and i am very proud that india has tamil and uh, marathi and kannadiga uh, kannad uh, sorry kannad kannad kannada kannada is a language malayalam these several languages you learn this uh, one of the south indian languages and um, things will start you know the language will get you into a literature into science technology lot of other things and then things will change so that that the we can't uh, my question uh, to the speaker is that uh, since you say that india is a uh, ancient civilization and some Uh, authors say that it's not a earlier civilization it's a um, indian civilization got its uh, shape in the uh, in the 90s but uh, what are the parameters you set for uh, determining that india is an in uh, ancient civilization what are the parameters so gulam hasan ji where are you speaking from which 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 part uh, i'm speaking from uh, kashmir kashmir okay see uh, so you, you you live in a land which which itself is is like uh, you know um, taj of india where you have panini who wrote a grammar or, or all the stories in kashmir so irrespective of faith or religion okay faith or religion let's keep aside for 2 minutes okay that is also important but as a kashmiri you yourself know that you know how old you have been now that will be a different discussion whether Kash- kashmir uh, uh, is different entity or part of when we say india i am not talking about the political land of india right india as as, uh, as a country formed in 1947 the whole geological concept i gave whole race race theory i, I gave about how old it is and then uh, the different um, way of we uh, all our books right uh, ancient books um, they still have been proven uh, rigved still even even if a conservative uh, the timeline is taken as still 1500 uh, bc which makes it 3500 years right and what was that book talking about it was not talking about uh, africa it was talking about your uh, saraswati civilization your uh, right uh, the excavation in harappa and mohenjodaro all those things say that you know your landmass your country was an old civilization uh, yes geographically the country was formed in 1947 right and and um, before it was formed it was it was partition right it was partition into pakistan and bangladesh so we lost a, a lot of our brothers uh, on both side of the borders uh, right but uh, if you keep religion aside say how old is a certain civilization civilization is not only your your uh, you know religion but religion is important uh, faith is important but also you know your, your language you speak the conduct you have the the customs right in kashmir you have uh, it said that kashmiris uh, the naga tribes right naga so if you see from kashmir to kanyakumari there's a lot of mention about naga in kerala you have naga vansha in kashmir you have naga all the all the uh, i think uh, there is a special surname for that then you see uh, peacock right peacock is found in everywhere in india and in every dt every god every even in in uh, yesd tribe uh, there is a mention of peacock so there is some similarity i'm trying to build all the similarities right uh, and the way we conduct things our family system right respecting elders um, the marriages all the things shows me that you know india the idea of india is not just 1947 jawaharlal nehru's uh, discovery of india but it is beyond that thank you uh, my question is like uh, even in our uh, like indic system we take the law of karma and we say like the evolution part like a single cell into a multicellular organism then to animal like that even in a, like even if you take the dashavatar there is from fish to tortoise to uh, you know uh, the mammals it is there so i think we have to give uh, the these examples like 
this uh, this what uh, this like this signs was indeed like depicted in our scriptures or in the in the indic way of life as thinking like uh, time as a cyclical sense and uh, and these things and uh, and so, and we have to provide uh, this uh, like whatever the scientific discovery that is happening we have uh, we have to provide uh, the indic uh, indic origins of these like the uh, our sages and our science they thought this about even before like uh, even thousands of years ago and uh, i want to say that like uh, there is one theory called big bounce the, that is like whole universe is like oscillation it it will start from big bang it will go to a certain extent and then it will come back it will be crunch and then it keep happening it keep happening i think we have to say that this is a concept of our indic way of thinking time as cyclical sense as an endless piece of time and uh, from that way i think we have we can uh, even move on to say that our indic civilization is more than like 60000 years old actually now in scientific uh, like uh, sci- according to science the uh, modern man the crow magnan man arrived around uh, 60000 to 40000 years ago according to evidences but our archaeological uh, uh, sorry our astronomical uh, facts or the stars the thing uh, says that it goes beyond that or uh, one lakh years ago like that i think from that point we have to start and then we have to like come to this conclusion yes Yes. So, so again, that's a good, good point. And actually, uh, if you, if, I'm not sure if you, if you were there in the beginning, I did uh, a small prayer where I said uh, Om Vasudev Nama, which is Vishnu. And I have mentioned in my book uh, the Savataram of Vishnu, from uh, the water to turtle to uh, to that uh, Vara form, right? And even in science, scientific world, right? um people have mentioned that you know how the life started from a small amoeba or one single cell to multiple cells so it's from water to so yes i have used that anecdote in the book a lot of things uh, you know when you speak you may forget but it's it's there in the book and um uh, so uh, there is one um, group with uh, whom i am attached to they are doing a research uh, in us what they are doing is they have uh, recorded few of the sound in in in, in the space and uh, for example uh, if if you see uh, if you go to antarctica and put a mic right and and the the slow or or or, or like uh, our friend gulam hasan wani from uh, kashmir if he goes to some deserted part in himalayas where the uh, avalanche happens and he gives the mic and he records the sound of that avalanche right so something uh, something similar people have done here that is a project which um, uh, indian americans they are doing they have recorded intercellular voices and they are given to somebody in karnataka to convert into a carnatic music and they found that it is very much uh, similar to what you know in shiv puran shiva used you know or you will visualize that you know he goes in space and all the sound comes so they were able to f- uh, convert this sound into a some kind of a rhythm for uh, carnatic music so there is a co- lot of correlation i'm not saying it is faith driven again people should understand this these are knowledge religion came much late um, you know the way we see religion today is, came much later but you know our ancient people had that kind of wisdom and uh, jayanth you rightly said people are doing the, that kind of research and i am part of that group where we are trying to convert all the sounds in the space and all into some kind of our our music and see the ancient wisdom can match right so so ancient wisdom is a vision statement you take the vision statement use science technology and see if you can come out with some kind of a product that's how the today youth should see any knowledge they should not see from just okay it's is god is my god their god and then i i i fight among each other no take the knowledge from wherever it is coming and if it is coming from our indian landmass which has Im, uh, multi, immense knowledge that use that repository and build your own uh, model and construct that's what i'm saying your entire education system should promote these type of ideas rather than you uh, mugging up 100 10 10 books getting 99% marks in your uh, in your puc and then you know you, that's not your in- intellect that you will never come out with with facebook or or uh, apple or uh, elon musk type of thing that has to be very very different way of thinking and different education so good question that uh, good evening mohan ji that a very bold and uh, very straightforward presentation i must say and uh, especially what you're 
still talking about uh, the educational system which uh, has covered much more than what is revealed so far as Indian civilization in the subcontinent is concerned. I have one small question. Now, not only you, sir, others also, whenever we have talked about uh, origin of life and things, we talk of uh, Africa and uh, Asia and subcontinent, fine. Why nobody talks about South America? There are temperate climates there and there are torrid climates there. How come that, that particular uh, part of the world is completely left out? So I've been to five, six places, right? And I find that they are really, really very old civilization, the Mayan civilization. I actually went to see the Mayan, uh, uh, the Mayan leftover, right? It, it's a beautiful, like, uh, so um, from geologically speaking, South Africa, uh, sorry, Africa, Madagascar, India, and South America were all connected. So if you see a lot of the uh, 50, 70 million years back, if you see the, the way scientists have given the breakup, so there has to be some flora, fauna, some kind of impact, which, which, which will be similar. So I'm not saying that uh, South America was not uh, populated at the same time, I, because I'm basing only on India right now. Uh, and uh, so this whole uh, migration theory is yes, South Africans were in fact, uh, uh, I just found re uh, recently, there is a, a tribe called Dinkas, Dinkas of South Sudan. Uh, uh, and uh, this is Africa, but uh, Dinkas and there is one more in, in uh, um, South America. I'm just forgetting the name and tribe. They do a lot of uh, Hanuman type of prayer, like, you know, Hanuman type of uh, God, right? The tribal, uh, they do that kind of uh, prayer. So there has to be something ancient. There has to be something which has to be researched. But again, when the missionaries or when the Spanish influence happened in this country, they totally changed the uh, landscape. In fact, uh, I was in um, Brazil and Brazil doesn't speak Spanish. They speak uh, a, a different language. And um, uh, they said that, you know, if it was, uh, uh, if British had not come to your country, instead of some other colony would have come say French, you would have still retained a lot of things from your ancient wisdom. So they have that kind of understanding. I was surprised Spanish and the uh, missionaries, they tried to do a lot of simplification by removing a lot of local practices and culture. And, uh, and, and they have definitely lost it. Thankfully, in, in our, we have all the books. Right now in, in the South America, they haven't uh, found, say, uh, Puranas or Upanishad or those kind of books to, so everything is, has to be proven or constructed using Mayan, whatever finding they have. And, they, and those countries are not that rich right now to invest into that kind of digging. They are still, so maybe uh, someday if technology improves, maybe you have such kind of a satellite which can x-ray the entire world, say, 100, uh, 100, 200 feet or some kilometers down and come out with all the artifacts. Right now, science is very, very uh, crude to, you know, find the uh, or construct the race theory, I, I would say. And maybe South Africa, South America is not that rich to invest that much on. But uh, there are some very talented people. I, I have uh, hired a few people from Brazil and I am the students. Some of them are really, really uh, talented. But and they are very, very um, uh, proud of their race. But Spanish influences has really taken over a lot of their ancient um, uh, identity, I would say. Thank you.